Hello everybody and welcome back to Imperator Rome, where we're still desperately trying to get our armies built up. It's not going well because Kataba keeps getting barbarians, and then they keep paying them to come attack us, and then all of our manpower has to go into healing this army. Which is unfortunate, this army's not drilling. It should be. Incompetent storage, huh? In Axum? Okay, well... We can, we can afford to lose a little money. We would gain five popularity, but four tyranny there. I don't think that's worthwhile. I think we're just going to pay for it. And the question then becomes, do we want to have like one province upgrading to a city at all times? I kind of feel like that would be a good idea. Oh, these guys want to import incense. Sure. I'll take money. So essentially, for one province to be importing at a... Or, to be upgrading at a time, that means our ceiling now become... Or rather, our floor for our treasury now becomes about 200. <gasps> uh-huh. This guy just killed the guy that we've been having problems with. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We can afford to lose 20 loyalty from him. That is so good for us. Okay. So with that being the case, we can move this army back up over here. This one back into Punt. And we can give it to... I mean, this guy's our best one, and it, and he's a scorned, fa scorned family. I think it'll be okay. So that'll be great. So onward we go. And like I said, our floor for our treasury is now about 200. That is a terrible composition, Saba. Like, that is an awful army. How much of their army is that? They have 24 cohorts, so that's two-thirds of their army. Fascinating. If only we could fight them without their allies. Mayin and Kataba. Mayin is with Saba and Leon. Kataba is with Saba, Mayin, Hadramut, and Thamud. Yeah, so Saba is still the weak link there. Oh, we will, uh, we'll take your money. Wife. She's our, she's our wife. Okay. Um, she's feeling dangerous and, er, she's feeling endangered and offering us money to protect her. This is a weird scenario, but I will take your money. Because <laughs> that puts us basically at our floor. Excellent. And I am going to get this started upgrading eventually, er, immediately, in fact, not eventually. <laughs> As soon as this month tick happens. There we go. Excellent. So that means that we have about two years to get the money back. So that's fantastic. Now, a lot of these settlements aren't anywhere even close to full yet, but getting them upgraded is nevertheless going to be a big deal. Because over time, they will fill up. And we don't want that to happen, necessarily. We do almost have this army filled back up, which is great. Let's get this army drilling and this army drilling. Fantastic. So about four months until the Katabian army is full up again, and then we can start recruiting back into the Gwinaran army. How close are we to additional advancements? Never remember which one of these is the tech one. Like, I'm, I can never remember the icons. I don't know why. Other games that Paradox makes, I can, but I can never remember them for this one. It's kind of weird, except this one's religion and this one's military. I know that, but I'll get more used to them over time, I'm sure. We're very close to a martial and civic advance. A religious advance is lagging behind a little bit, but that's okay. Our religious researcher is actually going to die pretty soon. 
That's okay. Hey, our manpower is now going up. Only 68 men are heading into the armies in this next month. And that's going to pretty much get us there. Except it's going to be one short. Unless there's a rounding thing going on here. Some sort of weird rounding error. I don't know why it would ha why it would store this in a floating point number, but um, apparently it did. Okay, <laughs> whatever. I guess they do that so that they can like multiply it by the the fine tuned attrition numbers, and then they just round it for for player view. But that's kind of weird. I would probably store that in an integer and round it in the attrition calculation. You can't. Well, I, I suppose you technically can kill like 0.28 of a man. That's a thing. Just, like, hack off his leg. <laughs> oh, that's bizarre. That's probably the weirdest thing I've said in a very long time. Anyway, we are at, we're at uh, full reinforcement now, so that's fantastic. Of course, we did annex these guys over here. Now, this is just a fort, whereas this is a city with a fort. And that's the thing. We can actually build a fort in every single one of our cities, and they do cost money to maintain, but uh, not a ton, realistically. How much are they costing us right now? 4.5, okay. If we were at, at normal fort maintenance. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10 forts. Now, some of these forts we don't, strictly speaking, need. Like, for example, I'd like to get rid of this fort. This is our uh, Master of the Guard that just died. Okay, we need a new one of those. Wow, everyone is terrible at Marshall. Okay. I guess we're just going to go with this guy. He is our best. But our best is not very good. <laughs> I'm also going to get rid of the... Uh, fort here. There is no real reason to have a fort down on this side, so I don't want to recruit these mercs. I want to get rid of this fort. There we go. Realistically, this fort is not necessary. If we have people over here, we've got other problems. Similarly, we don't need this fort. This fort is still very important to me. Main, go away. <laughs> Blessing of Oratel. Excellent. These forts are still okay. Um, do we want this fort? I feel like yes. In case we get in a fight with these guys, this fort would be a good blocker down this way. Okay. So there's that taken care of. Excellent. And we can afford an invention. I kind of feel like we shouldn't, though. And instead, we should just go ahead and recruit in a unit of archers. Since we didn't inherit this army over here, that does mean that we're going to need to actually max out these ourselves. Which is a little bit unfortunate, but I'm sure it'll be okay. So this city is almost done upgrading. We've still got a little bit left to do, but we're working on it. And realistically, putting these cheaper units into the Gwinaran army is going to mean that we're going to have enough money to upgrade a Gowie. Can we see in a map mode... Settlements versus cities? Hmm. That's just civilization map mode. Although, we're doing pretty good on the, on the old civilization levels. I'm okay with this. I guess population map mode is kind of that. We can kind of see our cities. Maybe it's something in the macro builder. I mean, we can see it here, right? We can see... Hang on. Why can we build a fortress here? I guess because we can have a fortress settlement building, and it's actually the same thing. 
Yeah. Okay. I guess that's it. Kind of weird, but whatever. We'll be in the normal terrain map mode, and let's take a look at our martial advances that happened. Ooh, a discipline upgrade. That's real nice. And then a couple of navy upgrades, but discipline, ooh. I kind of want this before we go into another battle. I'm not going to grab it yet, though, because we're going to need to have 200 gold by the time DeBark finishes upgrading. So that is going to be our current goal. However, I am going to go ahead and spend four gold on a unit of archers. That shouldn't throw us too far off. That said, we're not going to have 200 gold. <laughs> it's not going to be a thing. That's okay. We just need to keep upgrading cities, spending on infrastructure, and that's just going to result in essentially a bit of a snowball against these guys as we continue bulking up our military. We're currently targeting 15k for each army, although once this army is completed, that is going to go to 20k. And then once we're at 20k for each army, we're probably going to declare on these guys with three armies. Because realistically, I mean, sure, they have 20, 23 cohorts, 23 cohorts, and 22 cohorts. But they don't have the heavy cavalry that we do. That said, they might recruit mercs. We do need to bear that in mind. But that doesn't take into account our ally, or our potential mercs, or our fourth army. All of those things would work in our favor. Okay, debark is complete. Fantastic. Now it's not much of a city yet, but we do need to continue upgrading settlements to cities as soon as we can. So for right now, I'm just going to focus on the uh, Gwinaran area. So like the, the Tara province and the Axum province is what we're going to be primarily focused on. Did I say Tara? It's Tana. This one is the one to do next, I think. I want to get the entire Tana province. So, as soon as we have 200, although, we can recruit ourselves in a unit of light infantry. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Man, is light infantry ever bad. I hate it so much in this game. But we have no option. Oh. What's happening here? Axum is at war with Boris and Kush. Axum declared this. Can I join your war? I want to join your war. Can you call me in? I want in this. Is it only Boris? And Kush. Which is now teeny tiny. Okay. That's interesting. Well, have fun with that, Axum. We are uh, probably going to end up having to declare war on you later if you get promoted from this. We'll have to see. Boris doesn't have access to heavy infantry. A researcher here is being scandalous. We could gain popularity and corruption. This guy would gain loyalty, every member of his family would gain loyalty, and we would gain minus 10% slave happiness for 10 years. I feel like the popularity is great. Why waste our time on it? Indeed. Okay, let's go ahead and get this city upgrading. Fantastic. And then, as soon as we have another month tick, we'll be able to get another unit of light infantry over here. There we go. Excellent. Are you sure you don't want me to help Axum? Like, I can totally help. If Axum ends up losing this war, then one of two things happen. Either we get a border, a hostile border over here, which wouldn't be the end of the world. Or, Axum gets reduced to the point where we can vassalize them. Either way, that's not a bad thing. If Axum wins this war, 
That actually kind of is a bad thing for us. I don't see a scenario where Axum loses this battle. The real question is, can Kush get down there? They have 44 cohorts. Do they have access through a loot? I have no idea. Regardless, it's not our war. Axum declared it, so they must think they can win it. Whatever. I guess we'll just keep an eye on them. For now, though, it is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I promise we're going to be going after these guys eventually. Very, very soon, in fact. We've been at peace for a good long time. We're becoming nice and stable now. So very soon, we're going to look to expand again. However, for now, you can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.